good evening everyone uh, in this lecture we are going to start uh, types of elements but before that i will uh, recap what we discussed in lecture 2 so we have discussed the current flow through the conductor how the current flow in the conductor suppose there is a conductor with surface area s if i applied some electric field e in the direction like from left to right the electron moment will be opposite of the electric field that is in this direction is electric field the electron moment will be opposite direction that means the applied electric field will opposed by the electrons so that's why the opposite uh, direction will be electron motion and uh, the current direction will be in the same direction as electric field or opposite direction of the electron motion so that is the current direction will be in the same as the electric field now when this charge moving or charge flowing from one place to another place a net amount of charge is flowing through a cross-sectional area current will be flowed that current density is j is equal to the current by unit area that surface area is so units are amps per meter square right and the, we also discussed what is a sigma which is conductivity and this conductivity is a proportionally constant ohm's law in field theory that is the current density is directly proportional to the applied electric field right so that is a ohm's law in field theory and we can represent j is equal to sigma into e and the sigma should be a constant at all time or it should be it should not depend on any temperature etc right so it should be constant then only it will be valid right and uh, the sigma uh, units are 1 by ohm meter or 1 by ohm centimeters or mos per meter or siemens per meter etc right next one is ohm's law in circuit theory that is the current flowing through any uh, conductor or any material is directly proportional to the applied applied voltage that is i proportional to v and uh, we can write i is equal to either gv or v by r and uh, g is the conductance which is the uh, units are mos or siemens or 1 by ohms and this r can be uh, find like resistivity into the conductor length by the surface area right s on the notations are units are ohms or we can say length by sigma sigma is conductivity and sigma is equal to 1 by rho right and we also discussed what is the rho units that is ohm meter or ohm centimeter right and uh, also we discussed what is the drift velocity vd is equal to mu into electric field and uh, mu is the mobility of the free electrons and uh, units are meter square per volt second and uh, vd the drift velocity is, is nothing but meter per second and the electric field is volt per meter right so we should know all these uh, no units and uh, the equations now we are going to discuss now the types of elements so there will be five types of elements that is distributed and lumped elements active and passive elements linear and non-linear elements time variant and time invariant elements unilateral and bilateral elements when we study network theory subject so we should know how the elements will be behave right so what is it mean by lumped passive as, as well as linear and non-linear etc right that we will discuss one by one so what is a distributed element so it's very simple one so the transmission line so from generator to our homes there is will be a trans transmission lines will be there or we can see in field theory there is a transmission line that transmission line is generally is called distributed element that is it is very lengthy transmission lines and it can be represented by some equivalent is r inductor and capacitor and the conductance g right so generally this is a some equivalent transmission line generally we say right so the distributed element is very long in the the length length wise right and we can use only their field theory right or we can say have very high frequency ranges there right now that is a distributed element what do you mean by lumped elements is 
so the distributed element is the uh, example is the transmission lines transmission lines right so in field theory so very high frequencies when uh, it comes to circuit theory so we have, will uh, go for the very low frequencies right below less than one megahertz etc now what we uh, mean by lumped elements is suppose if I cut this transmission line to a small parts, right? So that small part will become a lumped element, right? Very small element generally we say lumped element. So this is a distributed element, distributed element. So if we cut some small portion here, so that will become a lumped element, right? So lumped elements examples are very resistors, inductors and capacitors C right so it is like this suppose some voltage source v and we can say this is r l and uh, some r1 and r2 and capacitor c and so on so this inductor and resistors are we can say lumped elements right <coughs> next one is active and passive elements so it's very simple to identify active means it is an element so this elements active element should give energy give energy to the outer hole or to the outer circuit right so the active means always you should give energy to the other fellows right suppose there is a voltage source v now the outside world is like some load is there right so this is the active element because it is giving energy to this the the adjacent loads right or adjacent elements so that is like a active element so it should always give energy to the outer circuit or outer world right if if the energy is taken by some element so suppose if there is a resistor r so always it will uh, take the energy to resistor and it will dissipate that energy so whenever energy is taking so either element or anything so that is generally it is called passive elements right so generally these passive elements are r resistors l and capacitors when these uh, values are greater than zero right whenever these values are less than zero it will, they will become like a active elements so that is rare cases we will see so this is like passive elements and here is we can say active elements right so depending on the resistance so i mean depending on the values also we can identify either it is active or passive element right again i'm telling active means we should that element should give energy to the outer world or outer circuit and passive means it always consume the energy or it will always dissipate the power or it takes energy so that is like a passive element <clears throat> next one is linear and nonlinear element so what is a linear element is the characteristics of this linear element should be a straight line and it should pass through origin right suppose some iv characteristics are there and this characteristics of passing through a origin with a straight line so this is like an active element and suppose some characteristics are like this so this is some uh, a1 and suppose this is a2 so this is a linear element and this is not a linear element so this is a non-linear element right even though it is a straight line but it is not passing through the origin right so this will become a non-linear and this is a linear right so the element which is passing through the origin and the characteristics are linear i mean the straight line then only we can say it's a linear otherwise non-linear right so that is a simple one now what do uh, what is the time variant and time invariant means invariant elements suppose its characteristics are not dependent on the time right so suppose we got some characteristics like this at one time time t1 this is iv 
next time t2 if the characteristics are same right that is i versus v t2 at t1 what is the characteristics and t2 what is the characteristics so we can for both these type of elements we can say time invariant time invariant right if the characteristics are dependent on the time that means with the time the characteristics are varying so that element is called time variant element and which is not dependent on time it's called time invariant right suppose this is a t1 or a t time t and some value is there suppose if it is maintaining constant like this we can say it is a time invariant suppose it is like this some variations are there so this is like a time variant and this is like a time invariant so that is about the time variant and invariant next one is unilateral and bilateral elements so what do you what do you mean by bilateral means right an element is there and its characteristics are same and when the current is flowing in this direction and the characteristics are same when the current is flowing in this direction and characteristics are same right that is called bilateral that means suppose there is a i versus v suppose in the first quadrant the characteristics are like this and if i change the current direction that is i mean voltage direction minus v and current direction also should be changed minus i and this slope should be constant at the in this quadrant also this is the first quadrant and this is the third quadrant right whatever the characteristics are here if it is following the same characteristics it is called bilateral right suppose the characteristics are like this and this is called unilateral right at one we are having some constant slope in the other we are not having constant slope right so here what about the slope here same will be here because this is i by v and uh, this is also minus i by minus v so minus minus will be cancelled and slope will become same right so that's why this type of characteristics are called bilateral and this is called unilateral right so in the previous uh, gate exams they were asking what uh, uh, by looking uh, what are the characteristics is a linear time invariant etc now we will see some examples suppose <coughs> the characteristics are given like this this is i and this is v right so they can give anything so in, in the x axis current or in y axis v whatever suppose it is like this right so it's a linear and we can say bilateral and passive element so now how can we say linear so it is passing through origin and it is maintaining same straight line and bilateral means whatever it is here same is appearing here now how can we say it is a passive element now for that we need to find a slope here right this is minus v this is minus i now suppose this is some uh, 2 and this is from 2 so if i take slope at each and every point the slope should be constant right so 2 by 2 so we'll get 1 here 1 by 1 will get 1 only suppose here minus 1 minus 1 i will get minus 1 by minus 1 will get slope as 1 next minus 2 minus 2 again slope as positive only right so whatever the slope here it should be same right that's why it is called passive element or we can say the slope is positive in all directions here and here so that's why it is called passive element right suppose if i take something like this <clears throat> now what type of this element we can say it's a is it a linear because it is not a linear so up to here we can say it is a linear but after this it is not a straight line so if we consider total iv characteristics it's not a linear so it's a non-linear is it a bilateral because it is 
some different form and this is some different form it is a unilateral is it a passive or active for that reason we need to find again this slope slope is in this uh, domain or in this uh, region we can say slope is positive only then we can say it's a passive element right <clears throat> Now, if it is like this, some i v characteristics, right? Suppose the characteristics are passing through R region. Suppose this is the characteristics. Now, is it a linear? Yes, because it's sight line and is passing through R region. So linear, right? Is it active or passive? That we need to find. If I find this is minus v and this is minus i, at this point, suppose this is minus one, this is one. What is the slope we will get negative slope right and what here we will get here one minus one again we will get negative slope that means this is a active element right and is it a uh, unilateral or bilateral because whatever the characteristics here same characteristics are falling so it is a bilateral element right linear active and bilateral Right, we are not talking about variant and time invariant. So the moment they give about the time, then only we can uh, talk about the time variant and invariant. Right. Next one, one more example we will see. <clears throat> so body is like this. Right. This is V and this is I. Now obviously. It is not passing through any origin, it is not a straight line, so it's simply non-linear. And uh, what is the slope here? Here slope is positive, but in this case it is a negative, right? So it's a depending on the we cannot say is it a active or passive element because in this region it will act as a passive and here it will act as an active. So we can say only it is a unilateral element, right? Non-linear and unilateral. Now the last example we'll see. Suppose it is like this, right? I and V. Again, it is a nonlinear and unilateral. In this region, it will act as a passive and it will be inactive. So we cannot say is it a active or passive element, right? So just remember what are the characteristics. So when you want to find the unilateral and bilateral, suppose it is like this. This is suppose at one and this is minus one, right? Suppose this is I and V. Now, from up to this region, we can say it's a linear, but if I consider total, it is a non-linear, and the slope is positive, so I can say it's a passive element. And from what are the characteristics in the first quadrant? Same characteristics, see one and minus one, so I can say it is a bilateral element. Suppose if this is extended like this, suppose this is extended up to 2. Now from from the 2 it is getting constant, but here it is getting constant at minus 1. So for this characteristics, it is a unilateral, passive, and nonlinear element. Right? So this is about some uh, types of elements. So we can easily identify the type of the element, right? So that is about the types of elements, right? Now, some are telling the for uh, lecture material, you have to come with the uh, what do you call uh, go to uh, blog that is uh, learning is everything dot blog pot dot in right. If you are having any doubt, uh, clarifications required. So please post a comment either in a uh, YouTube or we can uh, you can comment on the this uh, in blogger also right so that you need to do right